Hello, welcome to Tony's Bonsai. I've got an interesting little pine here that's going to be great fun to work on. So let's take a closer look. It's a Picea Glauca Albertiana Conica. And you can pick this kind of tree up from garden centres really cheap this time of year. This cost me $5.99. It's basically a little ornamental, slow-growing white spruce. This early work on a tree like this, the hardest part has already been done. And I did it in the garden centre when I was selecting the tree. There were probably, I'd say at least a hundred of these to choose from. And what I did is I worked through looking for one that didn't really have any major whirls. So a whirl is an area where there's multiple branches coming from one point all radiating around the trunk and this hasn't got any, which is great. I won't be doing any major root work on this today. Oh, look at that. Lovely, healthy growth. Mycelium, new roots, perfect. So all I'm going to do is literally just take off this top centimetre or two just to expose the root, the, the base of the tree to see what I'm dealing with. And in fact, unusually, there's not really much stuff piled up in this. There's often a good inch or more of soil, but this, that isn't the case. And, and so I'm not going to go any lower. First job for me is removing some of these lower branches. I don't need them. They're in the way. And I do want to have at least the basis of a trunk at the bottom. So I'll cut these back quite hard into the trunk. Like that. Before I make any more decisions on these branches, the trunk is extremely straight and I don't like that, I want to add some movement with wire. So I'll just quickly apply a piece. I've applied one single piece of five millimeter wire all the way to the top of the tree. I've shown a lot of wiring videos recently, so I didn't th think I'd bother showing it yet. Um, but I've basically just been avoiding, avoiding all these small branches. And my first consideration is the planting angle. Now, ideally, I don't want this going straight up at the beginning. So this branch here will be quite nice if I plant it at this angle. I've also got another one at the back that would also be a good one. And I think this one would be even better, perhaps on the outside of a bend. So if my angle was here, I could have probably this thicker branch at the back coming out from the outside of the bend. So I'm thinking if this is the angle, then if I get some good bend on that trunk like that, these two are coming from a good place, especially this one from the outside of that bend. So that's my initial plan. From there, I think I'll twist the tree kind of back on itself like that. So it's creating a bit of an S. And up like that. Hmm, interesting. So I've got some nice movement there. If I turn it round, you can see from the back probably a bit better. I mean, this could well be the angle of planting. So it comes up here, nice branch, nice branch behind it, coming around. It's got this branch coming towards us, but if I have it in the other direction, that'll be a back branch. It comes across and then up and round. I prop the tree now into its approximate new potting angle. And 
There are a few branches that are definitely in the wrong position, such as this one here, which is coming directly down. So I'm going to get my scissors. These cutters are not precise enough for this kind of work. And I don't want to be chopping off branches that I want to keep, so that's gone. This branch here comes on the inside. It's in the way, but I might still want it. No, I won't. It can go. It's never going to be used. I've decided on the rough design of this tree, and that's always going to be on the inside of a bend. And that's no use to me. So I've got one down here now that's pointing directly down. Again, that's no use. So I'm sort of simplifying the tree as I go through it. This is coming directly at me. So that can go. I've got one there, I don't mind. I've got a couple here. That one there is okay. There's a little one below it that may as well go. I'll pull out some of the needles that are growing on the trunk as well. So that's that little section sort of cleared up. As we come around here, we've got a branch that's coming kind of towards me and I've got a good branch here further along. So I think that one can go. This one's coming directly down, that can go. So it's not very technical really this, it's just a question of removing the branches that are pointing pretty much vertically down or coming from the insides of bends. This one here you see, that can be a back branch coming like that, so I'll keep that. Got a couple of branches here from the same point, and this is stronger and better, so I'll get rid of the other one. Nice. The main trunk comes up, up here, and I've got one point with one, two, three branches in fairly similar positions. There's a nice one lower down, so it's a question of which ones are these to keep. I think I'm going to get rid of that one in the centre, there. Get rid of that one, there. Leave those two. There's another one on the inside of the bend there. That can go. Another one on the inside of the bend. I'm trying to cut, <laughs> I'm trying to cut the uh, wire there. So this one on the inside of the bend here, that can go. So this is the area that I just cleared out there. That's all looking good. There's a bit of a small one inside there that's no good. Yeah, so I'm effectively just thinning the tree down and removing branches that I think will be a problem in the future. If I look down here, this is obviously the front here. When I come round the back, I've got two branches, one coming down, one coming across. I like this one coming here because this is going to add depth, but that one, that one can go. And again, in the centre here, they're coming from the same place. Get rid of one of them, allow this one to grow on. 
So we're back to the front and as I go up to the top, what I want to do now is remove any branches that are going to be sticking directly towards me. I'm happy with that one down there. I don't want this front completely bare because I want the tree to look good from all angles. I've, I've not got a, I've not really got a branch coming from directly out of there and it would be nice if I did. So one of the options now is to just change the position of this band by rotating the wire like that. Now these are coming from the outside of the band, giving me a lot more options. I'll finish with the top going up, but that'll probably be cut off in the future. What this now means is this branch is coming from the inside of the bend, which I don't like. And this one here, well, I've got a nice one coming down there, so I don't need this one. I don't want to go mad removing too much of the tree because I want it to grow on nice and healthily next year. But this is all just about setting the the structure in place so I've got no major problems. I just filmed myself slip potting the tree into this larger pot and then I realised I didn't change the potting angle. So I'm going to do it now. I'm going to plant this back in to the pot. The only thing that I, that I will do is because this is the new potting angle here I want to take just that top corner off because that'll be sticking up. So just by knocking that down there, I can now plant it at this angle. So in it goes like that. And this will mean that I don't have to bother tilting the pot to the side for the next six months. It'll be happy in here at this new angle. Get that soil in around there to support the root ball. And this will give plenty of space for any new roots to grow in the spring. I'm just working this round with my fingers underneath that root ball, just gently pressing down, filling the gaps so there's no air pockets. And I think that's got some potential that. Give that six months for this new shape to set in, remove the wire. And the fun of these uh, spruce, when you remove the wire, they do spring back a little bit. So I'm quite happy to have exaggerated the movement a bit on this. Before I wrap things up, doing the work on that tree today has reminded me of this similar tree that I did some work on earlier in the year. I applied some wire in a similar way and I forgot about it. So I've got it out. Looks like the wire's bitten in a bit. It's not a problem on a spruce, but definitely needs the wire taken off. So I'll show you how it is before the wire is removed. You can see here, I've applied a pretty significant bend to this branch down here. Uh, and that's what I want to take off and see if it's held. What I did is I bent the same piece of wire up and down this one branch, so it's like a double coil. And if you'd like to see how that first pine, well, spruce gets on next year, you know what to do, hit that subscribe. It looks like it's holding nicely. As I said before, they do tend to bounce back a bit over the, the few days after you remove the wire. 
that's been my experience so far anyway with uh, with spruce but that's gone from a really boring branch that was very close to the initial trunk to the main trunk to something with some real character and there is a fair chance down the line that I'll do a major trunk chop on this and completely take that top section off I don't know it's definitely a possibility but if I decide not to do that I can start working on these other branches and developing the structure I find interesting spruce almost impossible to collect they grow straight you know like that previous tree so last winter I collected a few straight fairly uninteresting trees added some wire put some movement into them to try and create something with a bit of character and I think this is a quite a good example so I've got quite a few of these that I'm looking forward to working on next year now hopefully when this starts growing and developing so make sure you keep your eye out this time of year for these little dwarf spruce trees the great fun material and cheapest chips as always thanks for joining me have a great day and i'll see you soon